Well, hi. I thought I should begin this talk today with on a little bit different note and share some personal things with you. Uh, of course, I've been in the ministry for several years. I started out in the ministry, left the ministry for over 10 years, left the church even for that long. But in 1977, I had an encounter of the new birth and then later the Holy Spirit baptism. And I've never been the same since and God reinstalled me or whatever in the ministry the way he wanted it. So I'm, I'm very sensitive about what I share. It may not seem like it. At some times I thought maybe I should do a daily program or something like that. But the Lord said no. And I says, okay, what should I do? And, and so by asking that, uh, I want you to know that yesterday I spent a, a, a couple of hours preparing something to 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 do a talk about, and uh, then I went and did the talk and made a recording. It was about 15, 20 minutes, maybe less, and uh, got it done, and the moment I got it done and started to uh, take it over to get it edited, uh, the Holy Spirit said, no, forget it. I said, okay. So I came over here to my study, and you can see it behind me. This is, I'm so thankful and blessed to have this study. Uh, and sat down and thought, well, what should I do? And so I took the same thing, teaching. It was, it was a PowerPoint type of teaching. And uh, worked on it for, I think, a couple of hours and without, with a few breaks. And uh, came to the point, I thought, well, that's about it. And then again, the Holy Spirit said, no, not right now. <laughs> okay. So what am I doing sitting here talking to you? Well, I felt highly impressed. The reason I'm here is because to share this personal aspect of my life uh, doing these videos, and I've done a few hundred of them. Some of you know that, watch it. And I'm thankful for those that are regular watchers and so forth. And, of course, we've got, I think, over 17, 18,000 people now that have, have signed up. So, uh, to me, it's very important to be led of the Holy Spirit. And I personally believe that when you get into something where you think you've got to do something every day or at a certain time, that eventually you're going to get off in the in the wrong spirit, the wrong you're going to get in the flesh because the Holy Spirit doesn't move that way. Jesus told Nicodemus, "Listen, the wind blows where it will, and I don't even control it." That's basically what he was saying. And he said, "Because of that, you know, what can I say that only that those that come to me come by the Spirit." And so, um, that's kind of paraphrasing it, I understand that. But I just felt I should share this because out of my life, the, most of the ministry I've done, the teaching has been out of my life experiences and it's been an awesome walk for the last 40 some odd years. And so I want to share this. I, th I think this might be important. It might, it might be meaningful and helpful to some of you. Some of you might get upset about it. I don't know, people do that. I'm trying to speak the truth, and I think right now more than ever, we need to come to the reality of what life is and what we're doing. There's all, all kinds of stuff going on on the internet, especially on YouTube about the end times, and people are seeing this, and people are teaching that, and so on and so forth. Some of it's anointed, very little of it is, but nonetheless, I'm not trying to be critical, but I'm very sensitive to the flow of the Holy Spirit. So if you're listening to this and you're trying to watch this, I, I'd say pray about it. Be, be, be sure. Because uh, a lot of the things that I, that I see that are taught are really not of the Lord and really not the truth as, as I believe myself and others that I know see it, but nonetheless. So back, back to my personal life. Uh, came home Sunday after uh, 
we, we our day on Sundays usually at least five six hours because we gather and sometimes our gathering is two three hours it's even been known to be four hours and then we have lunch together and fellowship even more and, and then sometimes we minister to people after lunch and sometimes it's all day but anyway come home Sunday and uh, our our dog uh, that I've had for almost 10 years uh, wasn't doing good. He's a big black lab that I got. I rescued him uh, out of the, the dog place in Dallas and uh, the dog pound, I guess you call it. And I, I've loved this dog. And I find, I decided to name him Buddy and that's what he's been. And and so he's he's had a good life. We had some events with him. He got home and, and I brought him home here on the campus and he was about four weeks old or so, and he got into some rat poison, almost died. In fact, the vet was surprised that he did live because when I brought him home after I took him to a, a friend of mine who's a believer, who was a vet, he's retired now, and he, he didn't give me a good report, but we prayed. In fact, my daughter, my youngest daughter, sat up all night and prayed with him, and he survived. It was a, it was a miracle, uh, praise God. But anyway, lo love the dog, and he's everybody on the campus here knows Buddy and our new Buddy. But anyway, by Sunday evening, by eight o'clock or so, it was obvious that he was bleeding, and he wasn't doing good, and he, he'd been losing his eyesight and bumping into things, and 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 of course, he after this event with the rat poison, he's never been quite the same, and so we had to keep him treated. Anyway, uh, it was obvious something had to be done, so uh, he was taken to an emergency clinic, <laughs> an animal clinic, uh, up the road here about seven miles of Grapevine. And all, everything came to the point, talking to the vet and all this sort of thing, that it was time to put him down. And of course, I I've done this before, but I, I don't like it. But one of the reasons that I saw that, I, I, I thought, how could, how could I not do this when I know my brothers and sisters in the days of, of Moses and so forth had to slaughter many, many animals. And it wasn't putting them down with a tranquilizer. It was slitting their throat and draining their blood. That had That had to be. It had to be a challenging, uh, would be for me. And anyway, so we put Buddy down. In fact, uh, it was very grievous. So that was Sunday evening. And uh, today we brought the body home. And one of the couple of the brothers got out there and we, we buried our pets here on the campus. And so Buddy got buried just a couple of hours ago. And uh, it, touching, uh, but anyway, uh, what I began to see was that I really loved this dog, and and the grief that I felt for this and so forth. But I, and and part of the part of the uh, decision came from the fact that he was suffering, and 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 he needed to be put out of his misery, and so that's what happened. So. I'm, the point I'm getting to is something that I've learned through the years, and not only me, but others. There's such a thing as inordinate affection. Uh, that's what we call it, inordinate affection for animals. And I've dealt with this. I've dealt with people that had animal spirits in them. And I've been praying with people, surprisingly, uh, all kinds of people, different levels and so forth, that manifested animal spirits. I've I've shared, I think, on other other videos years a few years ago about this. I've had I had a very polite, dignified lady one night uh, uh, praying with her, and she started barking, sounded exactly like a dog. People turned around, and couldn't believe it, and I was kind of stunned myself. And her husband was sitting beside her, and he, he was totally amazed. Here's my wife, she's part, she's, and you could see that 
a demon had taken hold. You could see it in her eyes, and she had turned almost like into a dog. Not, not physically, but barking like a dog. And then she snapped out of it. And so we, had, we realized we're dealing with a dog spirit here. And we cast this thing out. I dealt with another lady that had slept with cats. And she was a very rejected lady. Her husband and her did not get along. And she, in my living room, fell down on the floor and began to claw the rugs like a cat and humped her back. In fact, she had a problem with her back and being hissing like a cat. And we cast the cat spirit out of the lady. Because she had been attracted to her cat, she slept with him because she was felt so rejected, she was so hurting and so lonely that she allowed these an inordinate affection with her two cats. And by the way, after we cast those spirits out and there was a battle there, her back straightened up. The doctor said that she had a physical problem, but it was a spiritual problem, like like the woman in the, that Jesus encountered in the synagogue who was bent over for 18 years. It was a demon, and then that's what Jesus said it was. And so I, I've learned, and this is only two examples, uh, severe maybe, but I've learned that a lot of people take on the spirits of animals, and we call it in order to fix it again. Dogs, cats... And who knows what else? That's the main two that I run into. I know that people get attached even to snakes and so forth. It's amazing. Now, I just want to share about this a little bit. Of, you know, actually, the Lord said to Adam, He said, You know, it's not good that that man should be alone. So He created the animals out of the same material the dust as he did us. And he brought the animals before Adam, not just to name them, but he said to see if if uh, they might be comparable with him, that they, they would be something he needed. It. It's, not that, it's not good that he'd be alone. And so they went through all the animals, Adam named them, and uh, none of them fit. So the Lord put him to sleep, took a rib, and made a woman out of his material. There's a lot, a lot there. So I, I think, you know, that from that we can see that it's possible to be attached to some, an animal like that. But I don't think it's really what the Lord wants because we see here in the word there in Genesis 3 that the Lord thought at first it might work, but he said, no, it's not going to work. And so with the death of Buddy, and the experiences with, with this dog that I cared for, my wife Abigail cared for, we love so much. And the fact that we missed him, hey, I come across the yard at night to go to the house and he was always there for me, all excited to see me and so forth. And we ate together and we didn't sleep with him. I don't allow that. But I began to realize uh, this is not a good attachment here uh, for several reasons and I'll not go into that, but our country spends not millions, but billions of dollars on pets for the food, for the veterinary needs, for some people buy clothes for them. Some people sit them at the table and have them eat the same food. This is demonic. That kind of attachment to an animal. And not only that, buddies here, we got a nice big yard and so forth on our two and a half acres. But... You know, he, he was here finally alone. And then, you know, the Lord said to me, he said, dogs are okay, but, but for farms and ranches, <laughs> more than for the city and, and apartments and so forth. And I know this is not going to be popular. But if you have a dog, I pray about it. And, and ask the Lord to show you because I see some some real hindrances and distractions and and a lot of things about having an animal like that that might in some way affect our walk and it does it affected mine with the lord and i don't like talking about this but i'm just going to share with you what the holy spirit showed me that uh, 
don't get another dog. As much as you love, I've loved dogs, I've had dogs all my life. Some of them fully, full high bred and all this. But the Lord's saying, especially now, don't, uh, you don't have time for this. And uh, the next question is, and I'll, I'll be done with this. Lord, are there dogs in heaven? I've heard people say, I went there and I saw dogs and so forth. I think so, because it says in Isaiah that in that place, the wolf will lay down by the lamb, not the lion, but the wolf, and the lions will be there. The, the child will play by the hole of an asp or a serpent, and it'll be okay, it'll be safe and so forth. So obviously there are animals, at least there in the millennium. And God made them. He loves them. And so, yeah, I think there'll be beautiful animals there. So what the future is about, will I see Buddy again? Or any of my other dogs that I love? I can't say. It'd be nice. It'd be, it'd be great. But who knows? <laughs> I don't think we can say for sure. As much as we love these. So I, I just want to share this, that... I believe you can have a dog. Some some people need it. They're lonely. We have service dogs. We have dogs for the blind and all this sort of thing. And even police dogs. They have their place. But we've got to look and say, Lord, I let, don't let this get inappropriate here. Don't let me love this dog more than I love my spouse or love this dog because I'm hurting like this woman with her cats. Oh, why? What's going on here? So pray, say, Lord, show me about this. Is this your will? And if so, then help me be in an appropriate relationship here and not form an ungodly tie with an animal. And it's passing. It's possible, I should say. Okay? God bless you. I love you. Uh, this is out of my personal experience. And like I say, we just buried Buddy. And uh, I miss him. But uh, I guess it'll be my last dog. Peace.